everybody. Welcome. Hi. Hello. Welcome to our morning meeting. Um, come on in. Let me know that you're here. Um, and we'll give everyone a shout out. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Happy Sunday. I hope everyone's weekend is going well. Um, I have a special little, um, little live for you guys today. I wanted to, um, to give you guys a little peek at, uh, Percy here. He will be coming out in a minute. Actually, I'll get him out right now. But, um, we have our cute little guy. Come here. Um, our cute little Percy in his little tank. Hi, bud. Um, and we are meeting at uh, Percy's tank today um, instead of outside because we have a really fun event going on uh, right now. We are in the process of collecting all of the materials that we need for the new enclosures that these guys will be going in um, at the new facility. And they have a lot of things that they need. They need um, everything that you see in here. So plants, rocks, pebbles, all that stuff. They need a filter. They need um, the right lighting. You can see um, so I'm going to get Percy out and we'll talk about Percy and all of his different husbandry requirements. And then there's a link in, um, in the description to go to our Amazon wish list. And we have a ton of really fun items in all different ranges of price points, um, that will really help to make sure that Percy stays happy and healthy at the new facility. So I'm going to get him out and we'll meet, um, we'll meet Percy and, um, I'm just going to put you guys back on the desk over here and you can see. He's getting a massive upgrade. So this little tank here is, um, it's okay, but it's not as big as we would like to see for Percy. So he has a really beautiful tank being built for him by Portland Glass, some really beautiful stands being built for him uh, by AJ Dupree from the Forestry Center. So um, I'm gonna get Percy out so you guys can say hi. Hi, bye. I know. And Percy does like to, you know, make it difficult to catch him. So I usually do have to end up putting my whole my whole arm in there. Say good morning. Hi. Good morning, everybody. Um, so we have Percy here, and uh, Percy is a very, very sweet little type of turtle called a spotted turtle. So I'll show you guys why we call them spotted turtles. Hi. He has these beautiful spots all over his shell, and um, that is a wonderful form of camouflage for him. These guys are a type of a turtle that would normally live in like a, a boggy or wetland environment. Um, they really like slow moving water or not moving water. <laughs> um, good morning, John Paul. Hello from New Jersey. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Susan. Good morning, everybody. Thank you guys so much for coming in and letting me know that you are here and that you are, um, that you are uh, watching and where you're from. We love being able to see where everyone is from. It's really fun for us. So um, so if you just are joining us, definitely leave a little message down below. We love saying hi. Um, so Percy is a small little species of turtle called a, a, a spotted turtle. And um, they're very sweet, very cute little guys. They normally like to live in, um, in bogs or in like marshy wetlands. And this is actually about as big as they get. I've seen them a little bit bigger maybe, but they're really small little tiny turtles. They're very, very sweet. Good morning, Nicole. Hello, Kate. Hello. Um, they're very sweet little guys, and they are actually really wonderful predators, even though they're so tiny. Good morning, Chuck. Hello. Um, and they are wonderful predators. They um, they eat a lot of insects, a lot of um, a lot of you know dead rotting things, a lot of dead you know vegetation or plant materials. So these guys get a lot of different things in their diet. Hi, because of their really unique environment that they like to live in, um, they have a lot of really unique husbandry requirements. So when we talk about husbandry, good morning, Teresa. Uh, when we talk about husbandry, husbandry is just the care of animals, the care of these animals, and it um, includes a lot of different things. It includes their diet, their habitat, their enrichment, um, so a lot of things go into husbandry. Good morning, Anne, in Topsfield. Hello. Um, yeah, so please, when you guys join us, leave me a little note, and I'll give you guys a shout out, and we love knowing where you guys are from, too. It's really cool for us. Um, so these guys are... Um, 
are all taken care of using this idea of husbandry. So that's just the care for animals in captivity. And husbandry can be of your dog or your cat or, you know, domestic animals on a farm, or it can be of um, our sweet little ambassador turtle, um, Percy here. So Percy has a lot of things that go into taking care of him into his husbandry. Um, one of the most important parts is his diet. So he does have a very well-researched diet that includes... Um, Hi! Yeah, Nicole, we are actually, um, today we're directing folks to our Amazon, um, our Amazon link there, that's there in the description, um, to go to our Amazon wish list for our reptile supplies, um, if you'd like to donate. So, um, those reptile supplies will get sent to us directly from Amazon, and, um, they will help to, um, go uh, to these guys' new tanks in the new building. So their tanks are being built now by Portland Glass. They're getting a massive upgrade in size. We're really, really excited. Um, and the link to the Amazon um, link in the description will take you straight to that little list. It'll show you exactly how many of the, everything we need. And we're calling it our little reptile housewarming party. And it's funny because they do actually need lots of warming equipment. <laughs> so, um, so one of the first things that husbandry goes... Thank you so much, Nicole. Yeah. Um, good morning, Jay from Hobbs, New Mexico. That's so cool. Welcome, welcome. Um, we love seeing folks from all over the country. Um, Chuck, are they endangered? They are a species of um, greatest concern in Maine. So that means like uh, threatened or endangered. They use a different system here in Maine. And then um, nationally, they're considered like a threatened. But um, they are a little more common, a little more, the more south you go. So, um, in Maine here, they're a little bit less common than in other areas. I'm going to put him up a little bit closer so you guys can see his cute little face. Um, so I was talking about his diet. His diet is really well researched. We include a lot of things in there that, um, that help to support his digestion, help to support his shell growth. Um, these guys are given turtle pellets that you can find in the pet store, but the mistake that a lot of people make uh, when they have a pet turtle is just giving their turtles those pellets. And those pellets are great and they're nutritionally, um, you know, very supportive, but they don't always have all of the necessary nutrients for each specific turtle. Because if you think about it, these guys live in a lot different environment than a painted turtle or than a box turtle, so they need different food. He, for example, really loves his protein. These guys are insectivores. They really love to eat insects, so he needs a lot of, of protein in his diet. Um, and then he also, because he is on his own special diet, he's a little bit chubby for a turtle, which uh, is actually funny. You can tell a turtle is chubby if they get like little fat rolls coming out of their shell there. He has lost some weight, but, um, but so he's on a special diet for that. So we do bulk up his, um, his diet with wheat germ and, um, and, you know, lettuce like kale and carrots as well. So he gets a lot of different things. Hi buddy. You're so cute. Um, yeah, so these guys, their husbandry also includes their habitat, so includes the tank behind me. Um, this tank has, you know, a basic setup for him. Uh, these guys are aquatic turtles, so they do primarily like to be in water, but they can spend a fair amount of time on land. And so he has both of those options available to him in his tank. So he has water filled up to um, that white line that you see, and then supported on that PVC is a piece of slate, um, with some rocks and some um, some wood so that he can um, get up and haul out if he wants to. He also can haul out up here and bask so he can bask under light. This is really important for our turtles um, to get them at the right temperature. These guys need to bask in sunlight that contains UV rays so the light from a typical bulb is not going to be um, enough. They really need like a, a UVB bulb. And that is to kill off all the bacteria on their shells from the water. Um, it keeps their shells healthy. It keeps them healthy. <laughs> You're so cute, Percy. Um, so they need the right lighting and the right basking platforms to get to that temperature. The lights have to be the right distance to that basking platform. There's a lot that goes into it. Um, you can see as Percy is waddling around, he's, you know, moving his legs. He, um, he does have... Um, some webbing in between his toes, but what's interesting is he's a little bit different from a from other aquatic turtles because he doesn't have a ton of webbing in between his toes. He's um, evolved to live in kind of a boggy, 
um, sis water system. And that means that the water is usually, you know, sub submerging plant material. And there's a lot of plants, there's a lot of um, vegetation, there's a lot of dirt and mud. These guys like to burrow under the mud. So, um, so they will um, really need to have almost more of these claws than webbing. They're not um, using webbing to like push the water because they're not in water, um, stri like strictly water all the time. So they have these little claws that they use instead. You're so sweet. I know. Um, so definitely um, interesting adaptations. If we were holding a painted turtle right now, like if we were holding Lotus, who's about the same size, um, Lotus has much more webbing on her feet because she's living in more of a strict water environment. There's some vegetation at the bottom, but she needs to be able to swim really, really fast and chase down insects. These guys do eat insects too, but they're usually um, a little bit the more the ones that are like in the dirt in the mud they also will come out on on land they'll come out and walk around on top of the on top of the water on top of the bog so you might encounter these guys in that sort of a system hi you're so cute um they're called spotted turtles for the beautiful spots that they have all over their shells um the spots are a wonderful form of camouflage and there have been a lot of interesting science um, or, you know, things that we found about the, out about those spots. So, for example, um, males tend to have more spots than females, and um, they tend to have more spots on the left side of their shell than the right, all these things. But what we do know is that spotted turtles are all unique in the spot placement on their shells. So they all have a unique arrangement of spots that identifies them and scientists will use these um, these spots to help them identify them in the water in the wild um, they call them constellations the arrangement of these spots and for that reason you know we named him Perseus after the Perseids um, a lot of spotted turtles you'll find are named like Orion or Andromeda it's very sweet but they all have these really unique constellations on their backs that help to identify which turtles are which which is help for, helpful to the scientists who um, who study them, and they actually have field notebooks, and they draw little stars, you know, little uh, dots in their field notebooks to help identify which turtle is which. It's really cute. Um, what At what age are they mature enough to reproduce, asked Chuck. So these guys are reptiles and turtles, and they do take a long time to get to the point where they are able to reproduce. They, um, they usually uh, need to get into the teens, so um, between like 12 to 15 years old, um, as and some wait as long as 17 years old. So these guys do need to get up there to... Um, in order to breed and they are you know known in the wild to live up to around like 25 years old but they have been seen living much much longer th than that up into their um, 40s and 50s so they can live an incredibly long lifespan Susan the link should be in the description of this video um, right after the first like sentence of the video thank you so much for uh, for checking that out. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, there's all sorts of fun stuff on that link. Um, so all of the things that you see behind me do need to um, come with Percy, but because he's getting an upgrade, he needs, um, you know, a different sized filter, different lighting, um, different equipment. So the um, the link in the description of this video will lead you to the Amazon wish list that we have set up for all of that stuff. We've picked it out and we know what um, what these guys need. Um, it's just a matter of getting it to us. So we're hoping to have those tanks in the nature center in the next couple of weeks. We're really, really excited. And then the tanks will be going on these beautiful stands that have been built um, by a wonderful friend of ours, AJ Dupree, from the, um, the New Hampshire Forestry Center. And we're really, really excited. So, um, so all of the things that go inside the tank now is what we're, is what we're focusing on. Hi, Percy. Are you getting a whole new house? Yeah. And our turtles, you know, they're so deserving of a new habitat. Percy has, um, you know, he has a lot of space for him and then they do go outside in the summertime too. So, um, these are kind of their indoor or winter enclosures when they're normally sleeping or normally a little bit less active, but 
we're so excited and thrilled to be able to give them space that they deserve. And um, for Percy, that means a lot more water and a lot more dirt. So we want to be able to provide him with like inches of substrate that he can bury into if he wants. Um, and then also a lot more water in his tank. Um, he does have a lot of like plants that he loves to hide in. And then we'll also put leaves in there um, so that he can hide and bury in leaves and stuff. Um, but the filter is not really powerful enough to handle leaves all the time. So it does get a little bit messy. Um, these guys are, you know, religiously cleaned. We make sure that they're very, very clean. But what's funny about painted turtles is, or spotted turtles rather, is because they live in bogs that are stagnant, slow moving water with a bunch of dead stuff in it. They actually kind of like that. And so I have to, you know, keep myself from cleaning too much in his enclosure. Um, we do make sure that, you know, everything is as it should be frequently. I know he does looks like he's swimming. He's trying to get around. Um, so they, uh, you know, they kind of like that gross standing water that everybody would like really avoid everybody else. They love it. Um, I think because it offers really good protection for them so they can get into the weeds, get into the, um, get into the vegetation in there and be very well protected. They, um, they love to burrow under the dirt and the mud. Uh, they actually have one major predator. If anyone can guess what their major predator is, I would be super impressed if you wanted to write a comment it's an aquatic animal another aquatic animal that would eat these guys um and you know that live in bogs that live in kind of murky water what is their range asked chuck so they're um they're a an eastern seaboard turtle so they like to live along the eastern seaboard um and then they don't really go very far inland from there but hi buddy yeah if anyone can guess what their major predator is i think it's super interesting um and we often forget about them so, uh, I can, uh, I can give you guys, like, a few more seconds to guess, and then I'll tell you, but it's really cool. Uh, so these guys will burrow into little, um, into little, you know, holes in the mud, or they'll, they'll bury their, they'll dig their way under the mud. They'll spend the entire winter down there, so these bogs will often freeze over, um, fairly early, because they are, um, they're slow-moving water, so they'll freeze over, and um, these guys are usually under the water. Snails? So it's not snails. That's a good question, though. Um, these guys are a freshwater species. So um, a freshwater snail might, you know, come along and try to put its little foot into a shell. That could happen, definitely. Um, but we're, I'm thinking of something that's a mammal. It's a little bit bigger. Um, and then there's also um, these guys, so it'll freeze over and they'll stay under the mud for months at a time. And they stay down there, um, you know, all winter long. They are under the mud, they're under they're underwater. They don't come up to breathe, they don't come up to eat, they don't come up to go to the bathroom. Their, um, their metabolism and their cell turnover like shuts down, their cell respiration just shuts right down. So they don't really need to um, to breathe, to excrete waste and toxins. That it's really, really cool. All right, so I'm gonna tell you guys what their major predator is. Um, so the main predator of spotted turtles, especially in the winter when they are um, kind of sleeping or subdued and, um, you know, unaware, is muskrats. So muskrats live underwater they um they are an aquatic rodent uh sometimes people will call them like river rats but that's a totally different species uh but muskrats will live in these sorts of similar areas they'll dig in the dirt um and in the winter especially spotted turtles make up a big part of a muskrat's winter diet because these guys are underground they're not frozen and muskrats can kind of dig them up and go, you know, like we would go clamming, but they'll do it for spotted turtles. So these guys are actually mostly eaten by muskrats, which I just find really interesting. Um, when they're on land, when they come out of the water and they're on land, they can also get preyed upon by like raccoons and skunk and fox and all of those things. But when they spend most of the time in the water, um, muskrat are really one of the only things that really eats these guys. It's kind of crazy to me. Um, so yeah, so they uh, they do have a major predator, but it's not who we would expect. And everybody always forgets about muskrats. <laughs> um, you know, they're a rodent, but they're also like, I know, not not really rats, not rats. So river rats is sometimes a term that is given to muskrats. I've gotten in fights with like my 
boyfriend's dad about this a lot, but um, so sometimes people will call them muskrats. Muskrats will call them, they'll call them river rats, and river rats are not um, native to North America. They're native to South America, and they're called nutria, and um, they are not here. So river rats are not just, you know, muskrats, and muskrats are not just big rats. They're not just big, large, overgrown rats that live in the water. Rats are a different species than muskrats. Um, so it's just really fascinating and everybody always forgets about them and they're not beavers, you know, they're not as big as a beaver and they do have like the long rat tail. So it's really, they're an interesting, interesting species, but they'll dig in the dirt and grab up these guys. Um, thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any other questions, please let me know. I'm just going to plug again the Amazon wish list. We have filters on there, lighting, um, husbandry materials like little hides or rocks or anything that these guys might like to live in. Um, so we have a bunch of stuff on there that we're really excited to provide with these for these guys. Um, and it's a great way for you guys to, um, to support their husbandry, to support their habitats. So thank you so much for checking that out. And um, I think we're also going to be doing something in the next um, in the next couple of weeks where we'll be pairing, um, you know, adoptions and these guys. So we're really we're looking forward to that too. Um, thank you guys. And uh, if I mean we can uh, put Mr. Percy back into his tank and see him bop around in there a little bit. It is a little dark doesn't have the best visibility especially with my um with my camera so maybe we'll just hold you guys up here um they do have you know these beautiful colors all over their shells that are wonderful yay thanks dad you were able to that's wonderful um and they do have these beautiful colors all over their shells that um that help them to camouflage, blend in with the dirt, blend in with the um, the grasses and things that are that are in the bogs that they like to live in. Um, and they have all of, of course, these beautiful spots on them. What I love, what I think is so sweet about these guys is they are super tiny. They're a very, very cute little species of turtle, very sweet, but very good predators too. They um, they will eat tons of insects. They're very fast. They love snails and worms and grubs and insects and all those sorts of things. So just because they're so um, diminutive and cute, um, they just because you know they're tiny doesn't mean that they're not a wonderful predator. So uh, so you had to put in the address says Dad and which is three eight five Mountain Road um, in Cape Natick, Maine, and it's on our Facebook page. So. Thank you, guys. Alrighty. Thank you, everyone, so much for watching. Yeah, you're such a good boy. I know. So we'll put him back, and you guys can kind of see him go back into his, his tank because it's right here. So he has this little um, this little situation to help make sure he doesn't escape, but that's his filter. That's his little log that he loves to bask on. That's his slate and his rocks. And then under here is his favorite area. Um... Oh, you're so sweet, Chuck. <laughs> um, this is kind of his favorite place where he can hide in the um, in these little plants. I know it's dark; it's hard to see, but they're just some aquatic plants. They're not alive, but uh, we would love to expand into um, living aquatic plants. So I like to put him up here on his rocks so that he's not, you know, going kerplunk right away. <laughs> but this is his little house. This is his home. Where are you going? Yeah. So he kind of has to figure out how to get back. Come on. You going to go back in the water? Yeah. Yeah. And then we have this filter here um, that um, helps to uh, that um, helps to keep his water clean, but not like too clean because again, he doesn't really like he doesn't really like the clean, super clean water. Where are you going, bud? And then um, this is kind of where he likes to bask. So on this log right here. Yeah. Good boy. Are you going to go back in the water? Yeah. And then he also loves to hang out right underneath that little log there. You're going right into the corner. Yeah. <laughs> So he's really funny. He loves he loves this enclosure. He really does. But we're so thrilled to give him um, a little bit more space. Where are you going, buddy? <laughs> you 
He's like, why can't I fit in here? Why can't I go? Um, Chuck, he is probably around like three years old at this point. He's not very old. Um, he was found as a baby and taken from the wild by somebody who thought that he would make a good pet. They are very cute and small, so people think that they make good pets, but they do, again, live a long time, need very special diets, all of this stuff to help keep them healthy and um, happy. And then um, he was brought to another rehabilitator in um, actually Rhode Island or Connecticut. I think we picked him up in Rhode Island. But um, he was brought to another rehabilitator in Connecticut who had him in a house in um, an enclosure with some other um, some other spotted turtles, and he was kind of um, being mean to them. They're uh, they're a solitary species for most of the time. They're not social like the um, the painteds. But where are you going? Um, so he was kind of picking on the other spotted turtles, and so this rehabilitator gave them to us because um, you know he wasn't being very nice. So um, so he um, we were visiting the Roger Williams Zoo in um in Rhode Island at the time and we rendezvoused with her and picked him up so that was pretty cool we came home we left without a spotted turtle and we came home with a spotted turtle so um he's from Connecticut originally yeah he's very very sweet and he's gonna go hide in there but thank you guys so much um for humoring me we'll be doing a few more of these lives um from the enclosure from the tanks um throughout the week they won't be at 10 um they'll be going up kind of throughout the day sporadically but we'll have the link to the um to the wish list on all of those um so if you you know if you missed it today that's totally fine but thank you everybody so much for watching we really appreciate it and so much for checking out that amazon wish list nothing there is over a hundred dollars or um even like i think the most expensive thing on there one of the filters is like 90 but most things on there are ten dollars twenty dollars there it's really it's a very um it's a very easy way to give, and it comes right to us. You don't really have to deal with anything. Um, so thank you so much for watching. We'll be back um, tomorrow again with another one of our ambassadors. Um, thank you so much, Teresa and Chuck and everybody for commenting. We really love chatting with you guys. Um, have a great, wonderful rest of your weekend. Uh, if anyone has any last questions for me about Percy, please type them in, and I... Um, yeah, thanks, Dad. <laughs> My dad says, there are lots of reasonable items on the wish list. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. We'll have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we'll see you again tomorrow. Thanks. And then, and then.